What's up guys, welcome to the channel. So I recently bought this RetroBit Sega Saturn branded controller, mainly to use with my PC to play games on RetroArch and a bunch of Dojin shooters that I got. So in this video, we're gonna unbox this thing and see if this RetroBit Sega Saturn branded controller is worth your investment. And they say this thing works on PC, Steam, Mac, and this is supposed to also work on the RetroBit RetroCade. Let's check it out. So this is the Sega Saturn RetroBit Sega Saturn branded controller guys and I will have to say I'm, I'm pretty impressed how this thing feels now I would hope that since it's branded with Sega's Sega Saturn branding that it would actually work and function well you know Sega's been making a lot of good decisions with M2 and how they're handling emulation on their small mini system and just you know how they're giving the, the fans what they want pretty much as far as a lot of the retro stuff goes so yeah this is a welcome addition to my PC which is primarily what I'm going to use it for um, you know, I do feel some slight differences between this controller and an actual Sega Saturn controller, but, you know, they're minimal. Now, the length on this cord is, uh, is pretty impressive, you know, especially when you compare it to something like a PC Engine or Turbo Graphics uh, cord or even like a Super Famicom or a Famicom cord. They're a lot, they're a lot shorter. And right here, this is very important. You hold down five seconds for X input and D input, and that's going to be very important when you're using this controller with something like RetroArch. Now, opening the cardboard on this thing, this thing feels pretty sturdy. It feels like something Sega would have used in their packaging back in the day when you actually got a controller. I mean, other than the RetroBit branding on the box itself, it, it looks like it's just a regular Sega Saturn controller. Although you can't use this on a regular Sega Saturn, obviously it's for a PC, Mac, and Steam, and the RetroBit RetroCade. Uh, you can see I paid the, the retail price, the $25. I actually got this controller at Micro Center. If you guys aren't familiar, they're pretty much like a computer warehouse that has like everything in computing and I paid the retail price. Of course, you can find it online cheaper, but that is the controller and the packaging that it came with. No paperwork though. So here we have the RetroBit Sega Saturn controller up against just a regular Sega Saturn controller from a US Sega Saturn. Uh, I do believe this RetroBit controller may have been modeled after a Japanese Sega Saturn controller. I have no idea. I don't remember controllers in the US looking like this, but there are some differences. Uh, the buttons, the face buttons, they pretty much feel the same. The D-pad, there's just a little bit of difference. I feel like the D-pad on the new controller is just a little bit looser. Start button feels pretty much exactly the same. Now, the big difference, okay, so the shoulder buttons, there's a lot of travel on the original Saturn controller and on the RetroBit controller. There's only a little bit of travel, not a deal breaker or anything, just, just pointing it out. Just a little bit of difference. As far as the size, I mean, they're almost identical in size. I mean, if it's something different, I can barely see it with the human eye. You know, I think they might have used uh, molds from the original Sega Saturn controllers. But, you know, overall, I pretty much think they nailed it. I mean, as you can see, there's a little bit more branding on the back of the new controller, but otherwise, they're exactly the same. So these are the two other controllers that I use for all my PC gaming. Everything through RetroArch, all the Doge and shooters. You know, I'm just kind of, I guess, comparing the three a little bit. You know, that Sega controller, that thing feels pretty good because it's all about functionality, right? Now, this Nyko Switch controller, this thing's pretty good. It's decent. You know, there's some limitations with it. Uh, the Sega controller, you know, holding that start button down and being able to switch between X input and D input uh, on the fly is pretty handy. I don't know how to do it with that other controller, but this iPega controller is, is awesome. This is probably the best deal I ever got on a controller. It was 15 bucks on eBay, new from China. And the thing, it, it's excellent. I actually really recommend that iPega PC controller. It's, it's pretty good. But my favorite is that new Saturn controller, I'm not gonna lie, but all three of these controllers are decent. Okay, so this is what it's all about, actually using the controller on RetroArch, using the controller to play all those Windows-based PC shooters that I'm dying to play. And if this thing's not accurate, you know, I can't use it, I might as well take it back. And you know, the way I can tell a good D-pad on a controller like this, so like in a shooter, and guys, if you're into the genre and you know what I'm talking about, you know, let me know in the comments down below, but I do this like figure eight movement when I'm playing shooters, and I started doing it when I got really heavy into cave shooters, especially on the 360. But there's this uh, this figure eight movement that I like to do with the controller, and it it just works for a lot of those like bullet heavy like cave style games where there's like bullets everywhere. If you can like look at the patterns and figure it out, right, you can do this like figure eight and kind of like real slick like slide through there and just you know keep firing at the boss or whatever. But right now we're playing Battle Traverse, and this thing seems to be working pretty good. You know I'm trying to record footage, and sorry I'm not capturing it on an Elgato and using a webcam. I mean it's just easier to do it this way. But as you can see, I am using the controller. 
and it, it works pretty good. I mean, this thing works just as good as that IPEGA controller I was just talking about. That's a really good controller. I mean, I don't want to turn the video into an IPEGA video, but I mean, for $15, that thing works with like any Android device. I mean, it's worked it with pretty much everything I've thrown at it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of IPEGA. But anyway, we're going to try another game. We're actually going to do a game on RetroArch. We're not going to play uh, Dojin Shooter. So I think I want to do something in MAME. Some pretty good MAME shooters right here. Okay, we're going to do some S Parade. Now, you know, I've been playing S Parade through a MAME emulator for a while now. You know, as of the recording of this video, uh, the physical version of S Parade hasn't dropped on the PS4 and I guess the Nintendo Switch. Maybe it's coming out on the Switch. I don't know. No, it's coming out on the PS4, though. I do believe it is part of the M2 Shot Trigger series, so everything that they've done thus far has been great. I'm still waiting on a physical for that dang and Feverin. Um, and I heard Domaho was one of the games they actually added to their Shot Trigger list, but I haven't seen it in a while. So here we go with S Parade. And, you know, when I think about using this controller on RetroArch through a MAME emulator, this is the first game that comes to mind. You know, I'd say 70% of the time when I'm playing a shooter through a MAME emulator on RetroArch, it's S Parade. So let's, uh, yeah, there's a little girl. She has the best firing pattern, the little little girl with that little cape, that little fur line cape. So there's this like button that you can kind of hit and do this like flame shot that kind of clears all the area like around you as far as like if enemies are right around you, surrounding you. Works pretty good when you get tied up in a pretty hairy situation, but yeah, this controller, man, this thing, oh my god, yeah, this controller feels right. The D-pad on this thing for this game, all right, I can tell you right now, it's better than the Switch Nyko controller. It's also better than the iPega PC Android controller. Um, it, it works great for this game. You know, I cannot wait for the physical on this game to drop on the PS4. Until then, I'm happy with the Sega Saturn controller and the MAME emulator. Okay, so now we're going to try, we're going to try some PlayStation 1. We're going to try some R-Type Delta. Now, R-Type Delta, okay, the graphics on this game... The best way I can describe the graphics on R-Type Delta, if any of you guys have ever played Thunder Force 5 on the PlayStation 1, which I believe is a Technosoft game, the graphics are very similar to that of Thunder Force 5. You know, it's a really early attempt at 3D graphics in a shoot 'em up A lot of, uh, no, I'm not going to say a lot of other games. Other developers have tried that in the past, and some of those shooters just don't have mechanics that are that great, especially when you do 3D background and 3D ship. Now, if you have 3D background and sprite-based ship, you know, you can maintain a lot of the integrity of the controls that you're normally used to programming for, I would assume. But anyway, I'm getting kind of deep. This game rocks. Um, you know, the, the, the physical on this game on the PS1, you know, here in the United States is kind of expensive. I do believe it's expensive even if you get the Japanese version or I would assume the PAL version if it came out in PAL territories. Um, you know, I don't have a physical on this. I just play it through an emulator and I'm happy. So let's see if this Sega Saturn controller, this retro-bit Saturn controller, can handle a PlayStation 1 game, a PlayStation 1 shoot 'em up Okay, now there's a lot of, like, animations in this game, a lot of intro, you know, load screens and stuff like that. So it just takes a minute to get into. But, oh, yeah, yeah, this thing, uh, <laughs> this thing feels good, guys. Um, yeah, um, you know. You know, just like s -Prade, I feel like this controller, the D-pad anyway on this controller, feels better than the D-pad on the Nyko Switch controller. It feels better than the D-pad on the iPega, you know, Android PC controller. It, it feels good, guys. Um, you know, try this game out. You know, you don't have to spend the $25 like I spent on this thing at Micro Center. You can find this controller for $20 on eBay. I'm assuming you can find it on Amazon. It's probably other places on the Internet. I would assume it's uh, maybe on the RetroBit site or... You know, Castlemania Games probably has it. There's probably a ton of places you can probably get this controller for twenty dollars. But yeah, this thing, you know, I'm able to, I'm able to duck around, dodge bullets. Uh, you know, pretty much position my ship in the game where I want to position it. You know, this thing works great. So, what did you guys think? You guys ready to invest the twenty dollars it's going to cost for you to get this thing online? I mean, if you're a PC gamer, I say yeah, that's definitely money well spent. You know. Retro arc, all the doge and stuff, like for games like this, this controller works great. I cannot recommend it enough. I mean, there's cheaper options out there. I own a couple of them, but just the retro bit Sega Saturn controller, I just feels better in the hand. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video, and if you like awesome video games, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Until next time, guys. Peace out.